Hello and good afternoon from your co-op community stadium. I'm Sean Cashmore and next to me today is Coventry and Warwickshire Radio's Brian Halford. And you join us for this Southern League central fixture. It's Leamington versus Royston Town. Club stalwart Jack Edwards, his 400th appearance in the gold and black of Leamington today, narrowing the gap to Josh Blake and James Mace, who both topped the 400 appearance mark in the post-2000 era of the club. It looks like Jack will overtake Blake on 406 before the end of the season, but he'll have to hang around for another campaign if he's to overtake Mace, who wrapped up an incredible 436. Leamington come into this eight unbeaten and with 15 games to go in the league to fight for promotion places, both automatic and via the playoffs, things could not be more hotly contested. The breaks are unbeaten in the league in their last eight and last week picked up three points from a tough away fixture away at Bromsgrove Sporting, which spelled the end for their manager, Michael McGrath. The first half saw the breaks the better of the two sides and perhaps should have been ahead way before Callum Stewart was bundled over on the stroke of half time. The striker picked himself up and slotted home for his 17th of the season. The second half saw two great goals from a former skipper and then the current one, but it was Jack Edwards, of whom we'll likely touch on a lot this afternoon, who stole the headlines with an outrageous effort from his own half. 50 minutes on the clock, a free kick in the breaks half, and Edwards used both excellent vision and execution to fire a drive over the out of position and backpedalling to no avail Bromsgrove keeper Taylor, sparking joyous celebrations around Edwards on his 399th appearance for the club. Bromsgrove could not get themselves back in the game and as the encounter ticked to a close, Adam Walker put the seal on things in adding time, ending a fine move by bending a precise strike around Taylor into the corner. Today's opponents, Royston, formed as a club in 1875, making them one of the oldest clubs in the Hertfordshire division. The Crows come into this game ninth in the league and seven points off the playoff spots themselves and buoyed by recent form. From mid-December, they went on a seven-game unbeaten run, including five wins in a row coming into the new year, only to be stopped in their tracks with a away defeat to Alvechurch. On Tuesday night, however, they came from two down in the final five minutes to pick up a 2-2 draw against promotion chasing Telford. The equaliser coming in the 96th minute, turned home by defender Daquan Wilson-Braithwaite. Leamington gets straight on the offensive with Henry Landers who switches one out to Shorrock on this left-hand side. Shorrock will pick it up on the left-hand side and whip one into the middle where Stewart has space. Stewart on the edge of the area, can he get it onto his right foot? Yes, he can. Lays it back to Walker, has a left-footed drive, deflected it in. Adam Walker gets Leamington off to a remarkable start. There's not even a minute on the clock. Leamington switched it out to the left-hand side. Shorrock picked it up. Stewart had too much space from a Royston perspective on the edge of the box and he laid it to skipper Adam Walker, whose first time left-footed drive took a heavy deflection and Louis Chadwick couldn't get down to keep it out. What a start for Leamington, what a start for Adam Walker who picks up where he left off last week by getting a goal to his name and Adam Walker the captain gets his seventh goal for the club, his third for the season. Well that makes it about uh, two goals in about 90 seconds for Adam Walker because he scored with virtually the, first, the last kick of the last game but it was a lucky goal in terms of the final deflection but it was beautifully composed as you say Callum Stewart was given too much space in the box to turn and control, but he did it beautifully, teed up Walker, then got, then came the bit of luck, but what a start for the breaks. Well, those who just come into the stadium will think that the kick-off Royston's just taken is the start of the game, but it's not as they have a drive as well, and Hawkins has to field it as the shot came stinging in from the number nine harness, but Hawkins fielded it well and got down to it, and well, we've started at an absolute rate of knots here at UK Community Stadium. The game's just slowed in tempo perhaps over the last five minutes or so, but with 15 minutes gone, it's still Leamington 1, Royston 0. Edwards steps out of the back to help the ball forward. It's going to be headed away by Wilson Braithwaite. Gets his header a little bit skewed. Landers takes a couple of touches, does well. Feeds it across towards Walker, who spreads it out towards Shorrock on this left-hand side. Shorrock, first time cross into a dangerous area, and it's touched home. It's two for the breaks. Really good play again from Adam Walker, fed it out to the left-hand side. Shorrock didn't stand on ceremony, he whipped the ball into the middle. Chadwick came out to try and clear his lines and then it was Callum Stewart who was there just to touch it home. And Callum Stewart has stayed down because he was clattered into. But either way, when Callum Stewart gets back to his feet after the attention from the physio, he'll realise that he's put the Leamington team two goals up. Yeah, Callum Stewart 
diving in there where the boots were low. I, apart, I just wonder whether there might be a bit of an own goal in there from Ronnie Henry as well. It was a bit, it was the both, it was a super cross, so very difficult to defend. Stewart flung himself in, the defender did the same to try and get the ball over the bar. The important thing is it went into the back of the net. It's 2 0 to the breaks, and what a start. Meredith will take this throw in right in front of the Mick Brady stand. It's been helped on. Over the top it goes in towards Stewart. Neat touch by Stewart. Beats the first man, now waits for a bit of support. Just dribbles away and frees up some space. Crowd encourage him to shoot. He decides against it. Works it back to Williams. Space for Meredith on the right-hand side. Meredith, can he get his cross in? Yes, he can towards the far post where Barnett's there. Barnett chips over the top by Chadwick. Well, Chadwick couldn't work out his feet really. I think he wasn't entirely sure where he was in terms of position. It wasn't the too much of a powerful header from Barnett. Chadwick backpedalled and tipped one over the bar. And then I think he stood on Callum Stewart again for good measure. Tyrone Barnett did really well actually, the ball was just going over the top of his head but he managed to reach it, get a, make the goalkeeper work and win a corner but more really good positive play from the breaks. Free kick then, the box is packed, everyone back bar Callum Stewart who's just outside the penalty area. Swung in towards the far post, headed goalwards and headed straight into the arms of Callum Hawkins by captain Adam Murray. It was on target but now Leamington have sprung the counter and Shorrock is in plenty of space. He's got Stewart towards the far post, Shorrock can send it out towards Stewart. Stewart first time, what a save by Chadwick. Great strike by Callum Stewart, trying to pick up his second goal of the game. Chadwick was at full stretch, got fingertips to it, tipped it over the bar. Well, what a magnificent breakaway that was, just after a, uh, Royston had come quite close with that headed chance. Lucky it was straight at Hawkins, but what a super ball from Shorrock, an early ball that just threaded into Callie Stewart's pass. I thought he was ambitious to take an early shot because it was the narrow angle, uh, but he, he connected really well and has forced a corner, but really fluent, impressive breakaway from the breaks. Well, he might have been beaten twice this afternoon, but Louis Chadwick on loan from Cambridge United with a fantastic save to keep it at only two. So, free kick by Hawkins, up towards Barnett, who wins the second header in the air as he missed out on the first. It's four towards Captain Murray. Murray chests it down well into the path of Edwards. Edwards, bit of a heavy church and it works out towards Murray again. Murray, good feet in towards Harness, drives one goalwards and it's just wide. Well, it was only a whisker wide and Callum Hawkins, I think, was looking at it more with a prayer than a confidence that it was going wide because it almost skimmed the post and that's half a chance for Royston to try and get themselves a goal back. Leamington lower free kick right on halfway that Quainer will stand over. Quainer again then, left footed, swings it in towards the heads where Edwards will rise. Edwards does rise, nods it down. No pressure on the Royston man who picked up the ball in his own box. However, there is pressure on the clearance and it falls to Callum Stewart. Callum Stewart takes a touch and then just pulls his shot wide. He went back at near side of the goalkeeper instead of trying to work it towards that far post. Tried to give him the eyes. Chadwick was planted, but the ball was at least a foot or so wide. Yeah, I think Stuart will be disappointed not to have put that one away. It was a um, good work from uh, Shorrock to charge the uh, defender down and get the ball back into the danger area. And it was a good chance for Callie Stewart, but he just screwed it wide. Royston, left footed, pulls up those yellow socks and raises his right arm. Swings it in high, up towards the heads, towards the far post. Headed down in towards the penalty area. It's going to come all the way across. It's bundled around and then somehow it's been sent over the top of the bar by Wilson Braithwaite from all of two yards. He couldn't really miss. He certainly had to hit the target and he did neither. Wilson Braithwaite had the chance to get his team back in this just before half time and Levington escaped with their clean sheets still intact just before half time. Quainer chips one in towards the penalty area. Barnett beaten in the air, comes out to the edge where Walker collects, back in towards Shorrock. Shorrock bends one! Ah, oh, what a finish by Shorrock! Shorrock got the ball out of his feet perfectly and then just bent one round Chadwick into the far corner. It's William Shorrock's third goal for the breaks in his 19th appearance and the 25-year-old gets a fantastic goal to make the breaks 3-0 up. It's Leamington 3, Royston 0 and Leamington have started this second half really well. Well, what a high-class strike that was from the winger. Collected the ball near the corner of the box, looked up was given a little bit of space and time and curled a precise shot into the far corner. That's just what Leamington needed now, 3-0 up. And uh, who knows, uh, a nice bit of goal difference benefit might, uh, might be in 
uh, the making here because uh, they really have carved out so many chances today and uh, come on, let's, let's make the most of this. Leamington on top, let's go for four or five. Royston have their free kick and there's a three-man wall in front of them with Shurup, Quainer and Landers. It's probably one of the smallest walls I've seen, but either way, Caldicott Stevens stands over it right-footed. It is Caldicott Stevens who has a go. It's straight into the arms of the grateful Callum Hawkins who took up a good position and just plucked it out of the sky and it was never really threatening. Yeah, that looked comfortable for Callum Hawkins, but that's because his positioning was so good. And former Burton Albion man. Bowls it out to Meredith, who gives it away towards the number 14, who's just come on, Samson Eason. And again, it's picked up by Murray on the edge of the Leamington box. Murray out towards the number 15 on this left-hand side. He gets all the way to the dead ball line, chips it towards the far post, where Murray has a free header and puts it at, at least two yards wide. Well, similar to the chance that Wilson Braithwaite had in the first half, you'd have to say that, that is a really good chance for Royston to get themselves on the score sheet, at least get an effort on target for give Hallam Hawkins something to think about. And Adam Murray, who's certainly decent in the air, who's certainly been a nuisance this afternoon, doesn't make the most of it. Royston come over halfway, infield, in towards Williams again. Great challenge on him, but it finds the feet of Murray. Murray, can he get away from Edwards? Yes, he can, but only as far as Mvember on the right-hand side. Giorgio, neat play by Royston on the edge of the Leamington box. They just stand it up, look for a gap. Can they find it? Out towards Giorgio again, good save. Stapped away and then tapped home. They look for offside, but it doesn't come. It's Leamington three, Royston one. Royston get a goal back after a parried shot from Giorgio. Hawkins couldn't hold it and then it was tapped home I think it was Kean Harness yes Harness first onto the right band really good save that from Hawkins from the long range effort but uh, the Royston striker reacted quickly and actually tucked it home really well because there wasn't much of a gap to find there but he found it and just a sliver of hope for Royston 3-1 Edmonton players looked across to the fourth official on that right hand side Jamie Howe but his flag stayed down and Royston have managed to get themselves on the score sheet this afternoon. And just as they do, we're going to have a change as well. Shurok's going to be withdrawn and brought on, as you can probably hear from the PA, is Joya Madreno, who often brings his own fan club. Wilson Braithwaite in front of Paul Holleran, in towards Giorgio. Good challenge on him by Joe Clark, but it comes all the way back towards the Royston back line. Collected by Henry. Henry in field towards the number 14 of Eason. Eason, plenty of space to move in towards the Leamington half. Just helped on and flicked on towards Giorgio. Giorgio, good touch, but touched by Street. Wow, there was appeals for a penalty. Street hung out a leg. Giorgio went down, maybe a little bit too easy. The referee was right on ceremony. He waved it away. Edwards is saying to Giorgio that he dived. There was certainly contact in there, but either way, the referee has told the Royston players to get on with it and now Martin Naylor has ended up in the book somehow for the referee Tarrant I'm not entirely sure why the ball just seemed to go out of play I was still looking at the action in the penalty area with the conversation between Edwards and Georgia so I don't know what Martin Naylor's been booked for I can it only can imagine only be a piece of forceful advice forceful advice exactly that <laughs> Cole look at Stevens just this lining it up on Callum Hawkins goal but it looks like when they'll chip in towards the far post it is Eason sends it towards the far post Murray wins the header Theo Street clears his lines Giorgio collects on the edge Giorgio rides the first challenge sends it goalwards off the crossbar Great effort from Giorgio. He's been a nuisance ever since he came on. Got it onto his left peg, bent it towards Callum Hawkins, top corner. Hawkins at full stretch didn't get there. The crossbar came to his rescue. It remains Leamington three, Royston one. But Giorgio, Adrio Giorgio, who's been a nuisance, like I say, ever since he came on. And now has said a little bit too much to the referee somehow and has ended up in the book himself for having a shot off the crossbar. I'm not entirely sure why Giorgio's ended up in the book. He was the one who had the effort and it came off the crossbar. So I don't know if the referees booked him for not scoring. That would be unusual. But we are through the four minutes as a stoppage time. This is all extra from referee Tarrant. Meredith just chips one down the line and Barnett has a good touch and now has space just to try and run the clock down. Brownhill supported him. Brownhill collected on the right-hand side and he'll head towards the corner. And that's enough of that, says referee Tarrant. Leamington have picked up all three points at Yakart Community Stadium. It's been a good win. It's got a good performance in 
Jack Edwards' 400th appearance for the club. Royston rallied, they had chances in both halves and they managed to get themselves on the score shoot courtesy of Kean Harness who touched home after Callum Hawkins had parried a fierce drive and it couldn't be cleared away by the Leamington back line. But either way, Royston couldn't add to the tally and the Leamington players are just taking the plaudits on the right-hand side. Thanks to everyone, as always, who joins us. We appreciate all your feedback, both on the chat and on any social media channels, be it Facebook, Twitter, whatever it is. I'm that selfish and that vain that I always look out for it. But no, seriously speaking, I always appreciate all of you joining us. But it's finished here at your co-op community stadium. Leamington 3, Royston 1. Thanks for joining us. Paul, uh, almost a perfect afternoon there. Three goals, three points, but the clean sheets uh, eluded you this time. But nonetheless, a good game for Leamington, your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I thought yeah, I thought it was. Um, I thought it was. I thought we started the game brilliant. It was just what we wanted. Um, I thought the first 20, 25 minutes were sort of um, really front foot football, aggressive, um, and uh, and we were two up and probably could have been more up. Um, uh, so first half, you're coming off really, but you can see the threat they are. You can see what they're all about. Um, great quality into your final third, into your box. More targets to hit than any team in the league. Um, we've probably not, probably not lost as many headers in our box though than we have against anybody. But a lot of that is just down to the, you know, especially Murray. You know, so difficult. Um, so that was the threat. So then we dropped off a little bit towards the end of the first half, and then we noticed the second half really brought. I thought that was great. Then I thought that 10-15 10, minutes we really, really, really did well there, and um, really did well at that moment. Then at that moment, scored a wonderful goal. Um, in an ideal world, you want to kick on. But there's a reason why these have won seven, eight games out of the last ten, wherever it is. They're a good side. Um, and listen, they've tinkered with it. They've probably had the upper hand for the last sort of quarter of the game. Um, but listen, our preparation for this week's not been, you know, we, we haven't been able to get on the grass all week. It's been tough and I could, we looked a bit tired there at the end. Um, could have done with a little bit more composure towards them. But listen, oh, I'm nitpicking a bit, really. I thought I thought you know, 17 minutes of the performance was, was very, very good. Just got a bit sloppy at the end. But sometimes when you the game goes a little bit like that. You've just got to get some good blocks in and defend your line well. And Yeah, listen, it's uh, they're a tough, they're hard time to play against. They're just relentless with the, the going in and the big boy and runners off him and you've got to be switched on. So most of the game we managed it. Probably the last quarter of the game was, you know, it was difficult, but I think it was reason for that. And then to top it all out, the sun came out for the first time in six months and went right in everyone's off. We couldn't say, couldn't say a bloody thing. So, yeah, but listen, <laughs> I bet you've never heard me blame the sun before, have you? Um, but there we go. I'm thinking anything, I will. But... Um, no, but listen, a lot, there was a lot to like about the performance as well today. Uh, some of it, especially, you know, periods in the game when we were getting, playing through the middle and we're getting Kelly in them pockets and Will coming off the Henry. There was elements of that was good, but the pitch was really difficult as well as the game went on. And it was, you could see, well, probably Landers and Dan struggle so much running with the ball and getting out the feet and set players, you're struggling to you know, whip the ball in uh, with your foot in. So it was, like, it was difficult, but listen, like you said, like you said it's, there was lots to like, um, you know, and... Uh, and the last 15 minutes, somehow you just got to sometimes just find a way to see it through. I think we saw the quickest goal here in uh, in history. 20 seconds for the first goal for Leamington. It was, it was, yeah, yeah. Now again, you're, you're looking at fast starts, and yeah, we want that here. Um, um, generally, we've done all right getting after teams, but probably haven't scored the goals. But yeah, but I mean that goal, and then Callie's Callie's was a super guy, brave, you see as well. So he's got people look at him and look at this little 12 year old running around, think you know, and and he, as well as having all the as well as having all the all the ability, um, uh, scoring goals. Um, it's, there's a lot more to his game than scoring goals. He's, he's brave as well. You know, it's, it's an important character in football, um, and you're seeing that. You know, because he could, you know, he was prepared to get hurt there to score that goal. So great. So uh, he's really doing well in that pocket. I think sometimes the way we've sort of set up the last couple of games, we're, we're sort of gambling to um, ask more questions about teams in the attacking third and getting Cali dropping in around tied round and running past him. Sometimes you lose a little bit of control in the middle of the park, which but you've got to you've got to work it you've got to flip it really, you know, what what, what do you want more of? And I just I sort of, in that area there, you know, the last couple of games have been he's been excellent for us and um very similar to another young man called Lee Chilton, so that that's pleasing. But you know, and he's, he's scoring goals as well. So no, delighted with the way he's progressing, understanding football is coming on. Talk about big characters there. Uh, one thing that's going to come out of today is Jack Edwards' 400th game. What a servant he's been for you the past few years. Yeah, he has. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I've, I've been lucky to manage him for that long. You know, he's, there's 
certainly in the early days, he, he, you know, he, he, you know, there was lots of times that you thought he'd go out the door in the summer, but he stayed and stuck with it. And there was a period in Jack's career where he was, you know, um, five, six, seven years where he was as good as anything at, in the national league for us. And it was a big secret to a lot of the success we did and some of the results we had and some of the players moving on. Um, and it, he's had a tough period with the, with the head injury last year or two, but he's, he's sort of reinventing himself now. Um, uh, he's doing well there with Theo. And, uh, yeah, he's, there's a few more games left in him, I think. Yeah, I'd like to think, but no, listen, it's, uh, you've only got to see the reaction of the supporters today and the people have turned out today. He's, uh, he's well thought of on and off the pitch and... Um, you know, like you say, oh, you know, I could sum it up. I've been lucky to manage him for them 400 games.